Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave and today we're going to be looking at how Manchester United can do the impossible and beat PSG in Paris. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new and like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. Three weeks ago, Thomas Tuchel's PSG completely outclassed Manchester United after first half injuries to Anthony Martial and Jesse Lingard for Solskjaer to rethink his game plan. As well as the injuries, PSG nullified United's main man, Paul Pogba. Marquinhos did a world-class man-marking job on the Frenchman who eventually got sent off. Tactically, Oli persisted with the 4-3-3 and PSG's wing-backs were always available out wide. The corner for PSG's first goal came directly from wing-back play from Dani Alves. And it's not the first time that Solskjaer has struggled against the wing-back system. Ralf Hasenhutl set up his Southampton side in a 3-4-2-1. United went 1-0 down to a wing-back Yang Valerie's superb strike that came from him being free out wide because of the system. Solskjaer reacted though. United changed their system with Diogo. Diogo Delo coming on from Alexis Sanchez, switching from that 4-4-2 diamond to a 3-4-1-2. By matching Southampton's width, United nullified the Saints and went on to win the game 3-2. But there was also some smart positional play as well in there that we'll talk about a little bit later on. And this is how I think United should set up to beat PSG, the 3-4-1-2. Granted, PSG have better players than Southampton, but their systems are remarkably similar. They both line up with a back five and press with their three forwards plus their central midfielders and their wing backs. So the principles to stop the systems remain the same. United's 3 4 1 2 will match PSG's width out wide and allow the fullbacks to man mark each other. As mentioned before, PSG's goal came from a corner, but the move that led to that corner came from PSG playing this system. Of course, the two attacking midfielders were in a narrow position. Draxler opened himself up, played the ball to Alves as a wing back out wide. He crossed for Mbappe and it was saved by De Gea. Of course, that resulting corner led to the goal. But if Luke Shaw was in a wider position, arguably man-marking Danny Alves, that cross doesn't go in. But also with United's system in a way, means that there's two man-markers in that central area to deal with those two PSG attacking midfielders. Scott McTominay and Fred, considering the injuries and suspensions United have. That corner's not conceded. United don't concede that vital first goal. But also playing Diogo De low as a wing back is going to be vital for United's attack. What we've seen so far in Diogo Delo's career at United is a lot of thrust from attack. He picks up the ball and will drive at defenders. Not only that, he's bold with his positioning. You take the assist that he got for Andres Pereira. He's in a position to receive from Ashley Young down the channel because he's up against the Southampton back line. And that allows him to receive the ball, play it inside to Pereira, who curls the ball in. It is a wonderful goal, but it's created by Diogo Delo playing higher up. And that's going to be vitally important for Manchester United, isolating those wing backs 1v1, something United didn't have at Old Trafford. Their full backs were pinned back by Kylian Mbappe, Di Maria, and Julian Draxler. With United playing a back three, that'll allow those wing backs to attack. It's going to be vital for unlocking the door in Paris. Those three centre backs as well are going to be important to marshal the channels better. Not only does the back three allow the wing backs to push higher up, is it can deal with Kylian Mbappe slightly better. Kylian Mbappe's pace and his movement caused United so much problems at Old Trafford. Not only did he score that vital second goal, but his link up play and his ability to get into the penalty area was too hard to deal with. That day, United tried a back two. What they should go with at Paris is a back three, putting Eric Bay and Victor Lindelof as the outside centre-backs to deal with Mbappe's movement into there. You're thinking at Old Trafford that movement was picked up by the full-backs. So United having centre-backs to go into those areas and having an extra guy in the middle to deal with any movement or to double up on Kylian Mbappe is going to be very, very important. And it's going to force Man United to play a little bit higher up the pitch as well. If you take PSG's second goal, that also came from a bit of a problem from United's right-back. Ashley Young was high up the pitch, pressurising the ball. Di Maria simply broke into the space behind Young, crossed Mbappe scored. You're thinking if United have three centre-backs in that position, Young can still press the ball, then have a centre-back go over to there, cover that space and deal with PSG's attacking threat. And finally, let's look at Man United's attacking unit. That, of course, is Andres Pereira at number 10 behind Lukaku and Marcus Rashford. That tactical change won the game against Southampton. Pereira scored a goal and grabbed an assist from that number 10 area. He was free behind Southampton's two defensive midfielders. That's exactly what he needs to do behind Marquinhos and behind Verratti. Be that option, that ball-playing option. You take the assist that he got from the Lukaku goal. Not only has Luke Shaw now got a passing option from wing-back into that number 10 area, but it pulls the Southampton centre 
centre defender out of position. Consequently, that opens up the space for Romelu Lukaku to cut inside. If that centre back isn't pulled out of position, Lukaku can't cut inside and open himself up and cool the ball in. All to do with Pereira being at number 10 and being in a really dangerous zone behind the opposition's two defensive midfielders. Let's talk about the two centre forwards as well. Again, Romelu Lukaku is in great form right now, but Rashford is going to be the key guy in a creative sense. One of the big chances that United created against PSG was him drifting to the right hand side and crossing to the back stick. If Lukaku was in there, that would have been 1 0 Manchester United. Rashford needs to do the same thing. Now he's got a partner. The interplay between those two has been quite good in recent weeks. But he can pull wide, cross for Lukaku in the big Belgium at the back post, dealing with Kimpembe or even Keller on the other side. Simple as you like, Lukaku wins that. If Manchester United go to Paris and play in the same system, they're going to lose again. So why not try something new? Solskjaer has shown he has got a great tactical brain. And considering that they've got nothing to lose and the injuries and suspensions to key players, why not roll the dice and play a 3-4-1-2? Anyway, guys, I've been Statman Dave. Make sure, of course, to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new. And anyway, to the Champions League, I am excited. Thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't heard already, we've partnered with Squawker. And we'd really appreciate it if you could come over and support us by clicking their channel. And if you like what you're seeing, why not drop them a subscribe? Alternatively, if you've enjoyed this content, why not check out one of my recent videos?